Hello everybody, welcome back with Mega Gaming here. Today I'm going to show you guys how I created my recent thumbnails. Um, when I say recent thumbnails, I'm going to just show you what it is. It's basically these thumbnails where it's kind of like just very simple, but like, I don't know, I like simplicity and elegant and I don't know, maybe we'll see how it performs, but I just want to show people how it's done because, you know, there's a bunch of couple editing techniques that I use in this thumbnail. That's the same in almost all of my thumbnails. So I'm basically going to recreate this. I'm going to do a couple of shortcuts so we don't have to redo some like long steps because I don't want to do this in multiple takes. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to go create new and then of course you can always do 1920 by 1080. I just do that as my thumbnails. Sure, if you want to make 4K thumbnails or 1440p thumbnails, you can do that, but I just do whatever the basic thumbnail template is. Now, for this thumbnail, um, if you didn't know, I actually have been making these thumbnails with the same color as the mobile dark mode um, as that. I was just giving it a little example try to see if it, like, you know, blends in with mobile and might make this pop a little bit more. I don't know. Kind of a fun little experiment, but we'll see how it goes. So what I do, you, if you want a black background color, you can uh, just do a fill tool. I'll do a fill tool here and just, just to show you. And right here, I'll just show you um, how I just check the color. Well, I think it was 12, 12, 12 is the mobile color for YouTube uh, black dark mode. Um, but you can tr try it your way or whatever. So we're just going to select 12, 12, 12, and that'll be our background. You can also put image here or anything really here. And then if you wanted to apply a filter, if you have an image, you go to blur, do a Gaussian blur, um, and that'll apply a pretty good blur for if you have an image, you want to blur the background image a little bit. Good method there. All right, next, what do we want to do? Well, you can go a couple different ways. You can add your subject, you can add your text. Um, sometimes text isn't the best for thumbnails. Um, it depends on what you're going for. Um, I just like using the one uh, text thing, so that's kind of nice. So we're going to add a text here. So let's do, I don't know, emerging. Right now, our default text, and I spelled emerging wrong. Our default text is dark, so let's uh, change that to white so we can actually see it. Um, and I use Cambria as at least some of, of the... Uh, fonts that I use here, but you know, you can change to whatever font you like. Uh, this is kind of like a little bit Times New Roman look. Um, so it's kind of nice for just like an elegance in a way, but there's other ones that if you want to make it look more comic looking and everything. Um, I like to bold in my stuff. It makes it a lot easier to see on the eyes. So I basically just brighten it up and it makes it good. Now there's a slight touch you can do here that a lot of people don't realize. Um, for one, it, depending on what background you are, you probably want to add a drop shadow or an outline. And since our background is near black, but it actually isn't black entirely. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a background to, or not a background, but a drop shadow to this. But more like a outline than a drop shadow, but we still use the drop shadow tool. So we go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. I have a preset that I call outline. Um, you won't, you barely will see it. You'd have to zoom up real close to see the difference, but it adds a slight touch that people might not notice is there, but it does draw their eyes a little bit better and to understand what the text is. So I'll show you again what the, uh, drop shadow, uh, stats are for this. If it's, yeah, it's just like a little bit more of a drop shadow on X, Y, you gotta make sure it lines up a little bit over the thing and make sure radius is a little bit larger. And then op op opacity should be you know, maxed out. So there's like no see through. So that's kind of like how I did it to make it so it's an outline rather than just a drop shadow, drop shadow with a see through. A see through drop shadow would be more opacity or maybe a little bit different of a radius. So that's basically how I made that. It's basically the same thing as the outline. It makes it so I don't have to go and do different selections like, oh, a stroke tool and stuff like that. It's just a lot easier for me to do it that way. All right, so now we have a text and whatever. So we need this character. Now I could go and grab this the original piece for this character, but I will just show you a very simple one because it's a pain in the butt to try to find. Uh, some of these things. So let's go to my screenshots folder. Just I'm going to show you a process. I'm not going to do the entire thing. I'm going to copy over from my previous one. But if you find a picture with a subject, I don't know. Let's just grab uh, this 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 image right here, or drop this image in. Um, that'll add a new layer. Um, basically, we just use the lasso tool. Um, you can use the lasso tool to select things a bit. Um, if you're using real life uh, people or anything like that, you can do a combination of a select by color tool. If you want to select like by color, um, you might need to increase the threshold to select a bigger variant of that color. So you can select like a bunch or not a bunch. Um, but so there's a little and fuzzy select is also a thing. So if you want to select like just like him, you can kind of use fuzzy select to try to select just that subject, but it can get messy. If you want to just do it manually, which I do manually oftentimes, you just do the lasso tool. So you press, I always press escape before I start selecting anything because it just like kind of like resets it. 
And you can just, you know, go around, select the guy. I'm not going to go. Like, I normally try to get as close as I can, but I really don't care this time around. So we're just going to select my, my guy here. Just very meh. It's going to be a horrible selection. Oh, you can use backspace to uh, deselect if you, like, get it really wrong or something like that. The backspace will deselect, like, your most recent selection. Put this around, blah, blah, blah. Horrible looking or whatever. And then loop back around. We got it. Control X. Create a new layer. Or actually, you can just control V and I'll put it on a new layer. Or you can just do create new layer on the bottom right. And there you go. And you can delete this whole chunk layer, whatever it is. Actually, delete the layer completely. Delete layer. We don't need it. Boom. Look at that. See, we got our character now right there. So our character is kind of blending into the background here. Um, also, we want to make him a little bigger, even though it's going to cover up some of the lettering. As long as you can read some of the lettering. Maybe I got to move him over some. I don't know. Something like that. That, that might be helpful. So we got our character. Maybe let's spice up his colors. His colors looks kind of, I don't know. So let's go to brightness and contrast. Actually, never mind. I don't want to use bright, bright and contrast. Do shadows and highlights. I feel like shadows and highlights adds a little bit. Um, this char game character that I play as oftentimes, um, it actually has a kind of a unique touch when I add a lot of shadow because the in-game like lighting is kind of interesting. So I just like, you know, bump up the shadow sometimes. The highlight doesn't do anything for this video game. It's funny enough, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, whatever. We'll just bump up the shadows a little bit. Maybe we should add some contrast. So let's go over here, add some contrast uh just like that and don't worry we're gonna add just like in this previous image we're gonna add this white background part to make it a little pop a little bit better um uh, right now i'll show you another tool this is a pretty particularly bad image to uh use but hey it'll show this tool which is the heal tool clone and heal tool so clone basically just copies a circle of that spot so i literally just copied that over to this and you can change the brush to different like hardnesses so if I wanted to be like literally the exact hardness, I could do that. But I like to have like little feathering of edges, which is just like, you know, it's a little bit different on the edges. You can see how it kind of blends in. So you can do that with cloning. You can also do the same thing with healing. Healing, what it does is it takes the pixel density and it applies that density to this. Not copying the color, but just the density. So it's a little different than healing, a little different, which is very helpful in what, depending on what you're doing. So I, I'm not gonna do everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the size because that size is way too big. But I'm not gonna do everything. I'm just gonna show you a little brief preview of like what you can do with it. You can like make this a lot nicer, evened out. Boom, there you go. Like that line's kind of much, pretty much gone. I would definitely do a lot of touch up on this image particularly because that's horrible lines that's going on from whatever in the game. And I usually see I'm messing up right now a whole bunch, but whatever. So well, this is just an example thing. So yeah, you can use that and just make it all sorts of good. You can see I definitely like my life selection tool was also off of, well, anyways, because like look at these edges. These are horrible edges, but whatever. We're trying to do this fast. All right, so let's go on to how do I do the full on background? So let's go to a blank layer or a new layer. I'll just choose a blank layer really quick. I'm going to use the lasso tool um, for this image. I kind of like these like beams of light almost coming in the background. So maybe I want to do a beam of light in some direction. So I kind of like pick I kind of like thinking a beam of light as a triangle in a way. Um, I might not do the full triangle, but I would do the triangular shape in a way or trapezoidal shape. So let's do it from I don't know. I'm kind of thinking like let's just, just do random weird angle like this angle. Just do this little triangular shape like that. And, you know, extends beyond, but I don't care. We'll just do a trapezoidal. All right, we're on a new layer. So what do we do with this layer? We can go to fill color, the fill mode and we can just white white that out. Just boom, white it out. Kind of cool, right? I don't know. But it's not we're not done yet here. So we're on a, on a different layer down the bottom right if you noticed. We have a new layer, which is pretty solid. And what we can do here is we can go to filters. We can do blur. Do that Gaussian blur like I kind of mentioned earlier that you could do with the background. And we can increase that blur to some different intensity or something like that. So we'll just do intensity like that. And boom, we have basically what I did for this thumbnail. Except for this thumbnail, I had the weird lighting. I don't like this thumbnail as much, but I don't feel good in me taking that picture. So yeah, that's how you do it, guys. That's how you make one of these things. That's basically the same tools I use in almost all my thumbnails from this to like, who knows what. I have like so many other thumbnails. These are actually all my older ones and everything. Um, even like... Uh, this thumbnail I do like the same this is a blur around the edge right here um, that's literally just you know the background image on top of a white background um, and then this guy's just cut out I had to cut this guy out so you can see the edges are actually not the best edges but hey <laughs> you can't tell when it's on your phone right <laughs> all right um, but yeah that's basically all I have to show you guys if you like this like and subscribe all that kind of stuff see ya bye